ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen and ladies. Ladies and gents. I am playing this Al Green song in my background. It's not the first time that Redress has played Al Green, especially this song right here. This song is called Look at What You've Done to Me. I'm playing this song because I was sitting up here thinking about the video that I just did earlier today, the video talking about how all of us are in we're responsible, we're to blame. We, it's our fault. You see, I include myself. And because, see, the thing about it is I really do hate selfishness. Because there was a period in time in my life that I acted completely selfish, and I hate that aspect of life. That as humans, we are selfish. No, 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 no. Mind you, I understand that we are commanded to be selfish. We must love our neighbor as ourselves. So we must be selfish. I get it. But ladies and gentlemen, that doesn't make it right. We are selfish. You see, it says, say it with me. We're in this together. So this song right here. You know, because even Al Green did the song, Let's Stay Together. But this song right here, look at what you've done to me. Now, of course, he's not talking about it in the sense that I'm talking about it. But when I was thinking about it, I realized one thing. I said in that video, the people who are trying to figure me out and trying to understand me, all they have to do is listen. Because I didn't hold back. I wasn't pretending in that video. That's how I actually felt. That's how I actually feel. But if you pay attention, I kept including myself in what's going on in this planet. See, I didn't put it off on everybody else. See, and that's the problem with people. We always blame everybody else for our mistakes. We always blame everybody else for what's done. You know what offended me? You know what I was so upset about? Well, they did a news conference about the shooting on July 4th that happened yesterday. Today's July 5th. That was July 4th. They did a news conference today. And they're talking about they're giving the guy seven counts of murder. Well, I thought you were innocent until proven guilty. But people were clapping. Oh, we're going to be bringing more charges. And people were clapping. We, we have this thirst for revenge on this planet. Ladies and gentlemen, if that guy did do it, because I don't have any proof, I don't know. All we have is what they say. I don't trust them. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? I don't, I don't trust those people. Those people can tell us anything, and we walk away going, oh, uh, they, they, but they the police, and you know how the police are. The police will never lie to us. They'll always tell us the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I was just offended when I heard the applauding. I don't have any sympathy for the young man if he did do that. Okay? There, there is no, not even an ounce of empathy or sympathy. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't have any more sympathy or empathy to begin with because of the side effects of this disorder. I don't feel sorry for people. I wish I could. That's the way I used to be. Things do bother me, but they don't bother me like they used to. I'm sorry. If I see somebody hurt in front of me, of course I'll get them help. I'll tend to them, but I won't feel for them. I just, it's not there anymore. I, I, I've looked for it. I've tried. Uh, I had somebody tell me, and she is somebody that has helped a lot. And she says, well, don't you have any more sympathy? And I told her, no. I mean, literally, I wasn't joking with her. I was telling her the truth. 
She asked me, did I have any sympathy? And I told her, no. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't feel for people like that anymore. I used to. Man, you, you can sit up there and cry in front of me, and I promise you, I, I wouldn't be able to get over it. It'll be too much. But you can sit up and cry in front of me all day long. Like, for instance, there was a young lady whose mother was said to have been shot and killed yesterday. And she was giving an interview. Now, first of all, if my mother was shot and killed, you wouldn't hear me doing an interview the day later. Not on no national news. You guys saw how difficult it was for me to talk about my mother's death in 2017 when I did the videos on the Eon channel. Ladies and gentlemen, she kept looking up at the camera, and the way she looked up at the camera, I didn't believe her. I didn't sense the sincerity in her voice over her mother's death. She's 22 years old. Now, that's, that's one thing, because she's still a teenager in so many respects. They say women mature um, more than men, but 22 years old, you're still a child. Sorry, I didn't understand that until I turned 26 to 28 years old. Sorry, you're still a child. You still don't understand anything. But I didn't believe her. And I hate saying that because they lost their mother. Now, and I'm saying this because I don't believe the news. So if she truly lost her mother, I do feel sorry. But I didn't believe her. I didn't sense the love. Look what you've done for me. That, that's, that's what the song is saying. Love. What have you done for me? He's not talking to a female. You guys do understand this, right? He's not talking to a female. He says, love, look at what you've done to me. Okay, he's not talking to a female. He's talking to love. And if you don't understand, according to scripture, Jehovah is love. He is the personification of love. He is love. That's why he says, love, look at what you've done to me. That's why the best of my years will go to you. It's the only thing that I can do. Go ahead and listen. Don't come overnight. If you think I'm right, let me say before I forget. And it says, love, look what you've done to me. Okay. Now, why would he call God baby? Because he is an artist playing with words of a song. He knows what he's doing. Now, I, 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 hey, hey, I don't agree with him, but I understand. Okay. You talk about a hidden message in a song, huh? The only thing I like about it is look at what you've done to me okay ladies and gentlemen the only reason why I am doing this video is because I was and I do think about the things that I say on video I, I and you notice this I know that I'm different than everybody else not just the common folk, but everybody who does YouTube videos. I mean, who does videos like that idiot Eon? And who does videos like the idiot Redress? Okay? No one. I, I know it's different. But I listen to my own videos. I go back and I listen to them. As a matter of fact, before I put that video up, while it was being put up online, I was listening to it. And even though I was on my way to sleep, because it's after 10 o'clock, and I, I was on my way to sleep right about 8.30. And I just haven't been able to get there because that shooting has been on my mind. Not the people who died. Not the fact that they want to talk about gun laws and all this stuff. I could care less about their gun laws. 
ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter what type of gun law you come up with, anybody can get a gun because there are too many of them out there. And the NRA, it ain't guns that kill people, it's people that kill people. Yeah, but it's a distraction. I know it's a distraction, and you, deep down inside, you know it's a distraction. But what's going on in the background is what we need to pay attention to. Okay, so the first thing that happened today is that the stock market was down. But why? Why is the stock market down now? There's nothing going on, is there? Well, as I told you guys, and you all need to pay attention. Six months ago, there were over 80 ships parked off the coast of California. Six months ago, you don't hear anybody talking about 80 ships being parked off the coast of California anymore, do you? Now, 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 wait, hold on. They're firing 70,000 truck drivers. Now, let's say 2% of them get a job. 2%, only 2% of the 70,000. 2% of them get a job. I cannot give 10% of them a job because... Ladies and gentlemen, they were all independent operators. It is impossible for all of them to get a job with an employer because the employer, this is California, there's workman's comp insurance, there's health insurance, there is all kind of taxes that the employer has to pay. There is no way in the world they're hiring all of those people, not without some incentives from government. And government is trying to make more money, so it ain't happening. So even if 2%, of that 70,000 individuals, which is about 1,500 people, 1,500 drivers were to get a job. Ladies and gentlemen, that still won't help. Now, you guys need to understand, they shut down the ports in China. If you go to the store and you buy food, you got to understand there are packaging that it, the food comes in. There are chemicals that are shipped to create certain other components of your food that comes to you in the store. There are this little plastic piece for this machine and this little semiconductor for that machine. All of it comes through China. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what they did is they took a big, huge wrench and they put it in the so-called, you hear them talking about it all the time, global distribution chain. They took a wrench and they put it right there in the middle of the gear and the chain in between so that it stopped. Ladies and gentlemen, it stopped in December. So all of the companies now, including Amazon, that's why Amazon was doing its own ships. Go ahead and take a look. Amazon is using its own ships to bring supplies in. Now, I don't like Amazon. I think Amazon's a piece of junk, and I'm getting ready to go after Amazon because they thought they knew who they were f***ing with. But I'm about to get their attention. And I'll let you know how much begging they do after I finish. Then I'll tell you exactly what I did to make sure they understood. Sorry. Um... But what I will tell you that they did, they did something that nobody else was doing. Amazon thought in advance. They said, wait a minute. If all of these ships are blocked on shore, we need to keep our company going. We cannot continue to go unless we... So they started leasing ships. And so they started shipping more over here because they anticipated a global slowdown. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're here. That's one thing that's going on behind the scenes, and while they're distracting all of you, there is an increase of infections. Now, we've got monkeypox, and we got polio. Polio? Polio is back. Why is, why is polio back, ladies and gentlemen? I thought they eradicated polio. Isn't that what they sung to us in school? We saw the kids who had the crutches. I had them in my school. You had them in yours. The individuals who had those crutches, those arm crutches, who had polio, ladies and gentlemen, it's all of a sudden back. 
How was that? All I can say, you guys have no idea the amount of diseases that are going to be coming back because of what they've done. Again, look at what they've done to us. Ladies and gentlemen, they are covering something up. They are distracting us. Okay, let me see if I can explain it this way, because I'm, I'm talking to the people who get it. So that you don't, we're, we're not doing speculation here. Well, you're speculating right now. No, we're not doing speculation. We're going to talk about the facts. So let me give you a fact. In 1992, George Bush Sr. got on the international television and said what the world needs is a world of global governance a new world order what the world needs is a new world order a world of global governance I, I, I was listening to that I ladies and gentlemen I was watch I watch the news every day so I was listening to that speech now you go why are you listening to a speech from George Bush he wasn't the greatest speech artist in the world ladies and gentlemen because back then we paid attention to the news because of what was going on in the world. Right now, nobody's paying attention because they're just too distracted. They're being too bombarded by the AI systems. There is a, a TV series called Love, Hate, and Robots or something like that. It's uh, Netflix. And ladies and gentlemen, that TV series, I'm, I'm, I don't watch it. It's too violent for me. But I understand it. What I, I, I can say this, it's done by individuals who they they just have this this ignorance and this attitude and they they are a group. It's called Love, Death and Robots. But ladies and gentlemen, if you listen to the dialogue of that, it's where they're saying that everything is human's faults and we're all stupid and we're all ignorant and we did this to ourselves and we deserve to die and everything. Um, ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of ignorant people out there who have that attitude. We cannot save ourselves. Now, you, you all need to understand that. We cannot, we, we are, scientists told you in the 80s that we had 15 years before we'd be at the point of no return. That's why you heard people like Prince talking about 2000 zero party over it's out of time. Because they said, they didn't just say that because of the time of the end. They were saying that because scientists said that it was the point of no return. So I did a video earlier today and I told people that the scientists were correct. Not those idiots. Not the ones who said that it was climate change and all of that. The ones who said that climate change is not the problem. How do we know? Because they tested the rocks. They tested the ice. See, ladies and gentlemen, what they can do is they can dig into the ice, and that's what they were doing. They were digging into the ice with these long cylinders. And these cylinders, they were able to do chemical tests on the ice to see during the last 100 years, 200 years, 2,000 years, the climate of the earth and the temperatures. And they found that the cycles are still the same. Nothing has changed. So why do they have all of this doomsday? Because man is purposely damaging the environment. It has nothing to do with fossil fuels. Do you know that solar panels cause more damage than fossil fuels? I know, I know, I know. And I'm not one of those people. I can't stand fossil fuels to begin with. I'm an environmentalist. And I hate saying that because it sounds like I'm political. No, I'm not. Ladies and gentlemen, I pick up trash that ain't even mine that I didn't even put down. Why? Because I realize that there are times that I may drop something without knowing it. Because, see, if I drop a piece of paper, I have to pick up 10 more. That was my rule. So if I drop something, I am very quick to go grab it. And if I can't grab it, I will pick up something else that's three times the size of what I dropped. And if I can't find something three times the size, then I pick up three other items that's twice the size. Why? Because I have to make up for what I did. That's my mindset. 
So what I can tell you that I realized is all the chemicals we're putting in our environment, they're adding these chemicals to diesel. Go ahead, ladies and gentlemen, do your research. It's too late now. There's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing I can do about it. Go ahead and do your research. See, at first I was telling people, no, don't go searching for this because then you're going to target yourself. But no, go ahead and do the research and look at all the chemicals they put in our food. Look at all the chemicals they put in our water. Look at all the chemicals they put in our atmosphere. Look at all the chemicals they put in jet fuel. Look at all the chemicals they put in kerosene. Look at all the chemicals they put in our drinks. Look at all the chemicals, people. DuPont. Monsanto's. Chemicals. Procter and Gamble. And they try to make it sound like they're all good for you. GMO. Who would be afraid of GMO? Oh, come here, GMO. GMO, you're a cute little. Oh, get over here, GMO. Oh, you and all of your 12 legs. Get over here. Good boy, GMO. Who would be afraid of GMO? Ladies and gentlemen, genetically modified organisms is them purposely tampering with nature. Why? Why are they tampering with nature? Well, the first thing they said, they were going to make plants that were impervious to heat. Really? So why are they non-nutritious? They made them impervious to heat. They can grow in hotter climates. But the only problem is they took all the nutrients out. Why would they take all the nutrients out? Shouldn't they be adding more nutrients? Of course not. They are weakening the immune system. And then they give these people this thing they call a vaccine that weakens the immune system. These chemicals that they're putting in the environment weakens the immune system. Why are they weakening the immune system? Well, for the pandemic they're getting ready to cause so that you won't be able to heal. Hey, don't take my word for it. When it happens, you'll be like, man, that motherfucker, I'm going to die tomorrow, but that motherfucker, man, he was right. And just that simple. Look, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to get real one more time, and this is going to be it for a while. Ladies and gentlemen, I told everybody, in 2013, I was laying down. It was about 7.30 in the morning, and I got to see... The period that we're in now, shortly after this time, I got to see the aftermath of a pandemic, of people not shaking hands, of people wearing masks, of animals being used to determine who was infected. Go ahead. Tell me if they didn't talk about how animals are able to sense the infected and how they were using them in airports. They'll still do it in the future. That wasn't the pandemic that I saw. That junk that we just went through, that was nothing. That was a precursor. That was to get all of you trained. Ladies and gentlemen, they can't do this without indoctrination. They have to get you conditioned. That was conditioning. Why? Because they are going to be using military. They're going to use the local police and the military in conjunction with each other. That's why they've been militarizing the police department. If you don't believe me, just wait and see. Well, I got to see people literally not caring anymore. They Losing all hope, losing family members. I mean, people leaving their homes that they've had in the family for years. Properties that they bought that they've invested so much into it. Why? Because this virus that's going to come is going to stay inside the materials of the home. The clothing, the plastics, the metals, it's going to stay. And it's going to be very difficult to eradicate that out of those homes. So people are literally going to be abandoning their homes. Hey, it's not my virus. But they have to make sure when they put it out there 
that it does the job. Why? Well, let me explain something. This is their thinking. They don't have to worry about climate change. All they have to do is reduce the population. If they reduce the Earth's population by, oh, 5,000, I mean, 5 billion people, 6 billion people, 7 billion people, if they reduce the Earth's population to where there's a couple of hundred million people on the Earth, how long do you think it'll be before they have to worry about climate change? And by that time, the Earth has corrected its own self. Do you know that we have enough trees on this planet and our uh, acclimation system is enough to filter the air? But ladies and gentlemen, they couldn't just let the Earth do it itself. So the first thing these idiots did during the 40s was they exploded a nuclear device in the atmosphere intentionally. Why? Because they were damaging the ozone layer. If you don't believe me, you guys have heard the reports about the ozone layer over the state of California and Arizona and New Mexico, how big that hole is. Well, you do know where the test took place. Do your research. They did that on purpose, ladies and gentlemen. That's why California, Arizona, New Mexico, and the western portion of Texas are so hot. Go back. Those of you who were around California in the 1930s and the 1940s, talk to your parents, and they'll tell you it was not this hot. They'll tell you that California got a whole lot more rain than it's getting now. Have you guys not paid attention to the storms, how they go around Los Angeles? How they go around Arizona? If it wasn't for the monsoons, Arizona, man, that would be a desert desert. Okay? So... What I was allowed to see is people losing all hope. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not something you all want to see. That's not all something you want to be a part of. We've seen places where people lose hope. You don't understand just yet. Every last one of these incidents where they do these mass shootings, the people who live in those communities, the look on their faces, the way they operate, those are people who lost all hope. Somebody who lost their mother, sister, brother, cousin, uncle, niece, nephew, all of them at the same time due to a virus. They lose all hope. You are a husband and wife, you're a young family, and you lose your children. You lose all hope. Why was I allowed to see that? Like I said, I, I fully, firmly believed in it, what I was allowed to see, because I was there. It wasn't just uh, seeing it, I was there. Like you see in these movies where the person is brought to that time period. I wasn't asleep. I was fully awake. I was brought there. I could smell the air. I could even see the disinfectant that they were putting in the air that turned the air like a tang type green, I mean tang type orange. Why? Because they, their stupid pandemic got out of control. Sorry, I'm going to get in trouble for this one. <laughs> I ain't supposed to be telling y'all all of this. Go back and listen to the videos. Ladies and gentlemen, it was when I tried to tell you guys this stuff in 2017 that I told you they're going to come after me the moment I mentioned this to you. Remember, I mentioned it in 2017. Before they even did the stupid pandemic, talking about Wuhan, China, the pandemic did not start in Wuhan, China, ladies and gentlemen. It did not start in Wuhan, China. See, if it was Wuhan, China that it started in, then it wouldn't have spread as fast as it did. It was in the air. They even told y'all it's in the air. So why are you wearing a mask? Sorry, the mask has helped. Because did you notice how many people didn't catch the flu? Ain't that interesting, huh? During the whole corona thing, nobody caught the flu. Amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, people did catch the flu. You just didn't understand. Corona is the flu. Wait a minute, all bird flus, flus are bird flus. That's right. A flu is just nothing but bird flu mixed with the common cold. Go back and look. That's why they're able to predict it. 
But notice how the flu always was seasonal. Winter time. Fall into winter. Winter into spring. How many people you know caught the flu during the summer? Uh huh. Exactly. They knew what they were doing, but they needed something that wasn't so seasonal. That was year round. Thus, that's why they mixed the other components AIDS, SARS, MERS, Corona. Yay! We got us a concoction. What do you do? Ladies and gentlemen, even though I want to, I still can't tell you guys what to do to avoid it. I know exactly what to do. As a matter of fact, they're doing everything in their power to get rid of that option, to avoid getting sick. There's just one thing you need to do, but they're doing everything in their power, and I can't tell you. Sorry. I'm literally restricted from doing so. See, I can't get in trouble with him. These individuals, I, I could care less because eventually they're going to come at me one more time, and I know it, and I'm not, I'm not running from it, not scared of it, not afraid of it. Was at first, it bothered me knowing what's going to happen. When I was in 2001, uh, I had an experience. Let's just say it was an experience, an experience that only almost 100 and some thousand people get to experience throughout the last 2,000 years. Well, a little bit over that, because some of them, you know, the experience doesn't, they don't hold on to it for very long. And right after that, I said to the God that I serve, I told him to please allow me to know what's going to happen with me, how I'm going to be affected by things, because I told him he knows how much I hate death and he knows how much I hate surprises. And he has been true to my request. Before things have happened to me, I told you guys what was going to happen about Puerto Rico and about what was going to happen after 2017. Remember, they came after me right after I did that video. I'm okay. Now, the thing about it, it wasn't just a video because I pissed them off because I told you guys about the defrauded homeowners of America in 2012. That was the first one. That's when I really got them because I'm going to explain this to you guys so that you understand because I need to let you know where I'm going because I haven't told you all about this. So we're going to keep it real one more again, then I'm going to end this. I'm going to try to go to about 45 minutes after, but not after that because I got to go get some sleep. I'm tired. In 2012, ladies and gentlemen, I saw all of the people who were losing their homes and they tried to make people think that it was some financial crisis. There was no financial crisis. I knew then that all homes were paid for. I can prove it now. I could prove it then, but I can prove it even more so now because back then I wasn't trying to pull together the congressional record. I was just trying to pull together the facts. Well, now I can pull together the congressional record. Well, why the congressional record? Because according to the courts, the congressional record plus the statute at large is the unrebuttable presumption of what the law is. Remember, the Constitution is supreme law of the land, but the Constitution only puts a limit on government. So regarding the other laws that is set up for the government and its officers, well, that's statutes at large. Statutes at large are not written for you. It's written for the agents of government, the juristic person, i.e. the all capital name corporation. We talked about that in the video today. It's called a juristic person. That's what the all caps name is. The all caps name is not you. It never was you. It's just a persona that was created, which is why you operate through a trust because now you're the trustee for that. You do things right, you get to go into court and show them proof that you're the trustee for the trust. The trustee doesn't stand as surety, ladies and gentlemen. You don't want to be the beneficiary. There's no need to be the beneficiary. You could be the trustee and the beneficiary, but there's no need to be the beneficiary because beneficiaries are not recognized in their equitable courts. Go and do your research. You can't go into court as a beneficiary 
I, there was somebody who did a video telling people to go into court claiming they're beneficiaries. I've already been told y'all, stop listening to these people who just talk. Do your research on appearance. It says submitting to the court's jurisdiction for the legal definition of appearance. So if you do a special appearance or a, 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 a five minute appearance or a two minute appearance, doesn't matter what type of appearance you do, you're submitting to the court's jurisdiction. The Supreme Court has already said that. All you gotta do is do, well, I did the videos back in 2012 explaining the thing about the appearance, okay? Doesn't matter what type of appearance, you don't do no special appearance. If you're gonna go, now the first thing they'll ask you if you're gonna waive rights. Tell them, waive rights? What rights do I, what I waive? Go ahead, what rights are you asking me? Am I, am I willing to waive? Talk to me, give them to me. My, my right to be represented by counsel? Oh, well, let me tell you what I ain't gonna do. I ain't got time to be sitting up here worried about your stupid questions. You don't get to give me no rights. I'm not accepting no rights from you. So it ain't an issue of waiving. You can't waive what you never had. And I'm not accepting it from you. You don't get to give me rights. You're a servant. How is a servant gonna give me rights? Take care of it that way. Ladies and gentlemen, when they ask you, are you waiving your rights? And the judge will ask you that. The moment you speak up, the judge will ask you, are you waiving your rights? When you say, I'm going to speak on my own behalf and they want to put you through a Marsden hearing and all these other hearings and have you sign these papers, don't sign nothing. You don't have to sign nothing to exercise your unalienable right. Go ahead, tell them, show me where I gave you permission. Show me where I and the other people of this nation gave you permission to make us sign a piece of paper when it comes to our rights as men and women. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, there is no definition in statutory law for a man or a woman. Stop going in there with all these titles. I agree with people when they say that. Stop going in there with all the titles. Just go in there and just tell them to shut the up. I ain't got time for your games. No, no, no. I do not wish to be subject to statutory authority. We're going to deal with the law. You keep your statutes to yourself. I want the law under the authority that's delegated. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the limited power that the courts are given, the administrative is given, and the legislative are given, that's the power of the people. You can go in under the power of the people because, remember, their authority is limited under that power, not statutory authority. But the limited authority delegated to the branches of government, that's, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go in under that. I ain't got no problem with that. Why? Because the government is restricted from infringing upon your unalienable rights. Don't take my word for it. Go back and read that so-called First Amendment. Congress shall make no law which abridges the rights of the people to the freedom of speech. So you have rights that are beyond statutory rights. Your rights are not constitutional. Your rights are inalienable. They exist prior to the Constitution. Notice that the preamble said, we the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union. The people are the ones breathing life into the Constitution, not Congress, not the courts. Let's get back to that explanation that I said I was gonna do. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, to put all of this, because I will probably go past 45, to put all this in a nutshell, what's getting ready to happen and what you all need to do to avoid, I can't tell you. Sorry. Even if I told you, you would do just like it was in 2017, you wouldn't listen. Like I said, I've already said all these things. The unique thing is there are a lot of people, oh, I had a premonition, oh, I'm an apostle of the Lord. They, all of those people, please. Well, the Lord spoke to me. The Lord spoke to you. What did he speak to you about? What makes you so important? I'm sorry, I apologize. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't pay any attention to those people. I don't pay any attention to guesswork. The, the reason why 
I'm saying what I'm saying because everything I told you, I told you just wait and see. Just like I said earlier today, just wait and see, and you're going to tell me that mother was right. I'm dying, and I'm going to be dead tomorrow, but that mother was right. And I'm all right with that because it's not about whether or not I'm right or not. I asked him to help me understand what was going to happen concerning me. But you all don't understand, and I'm going to explain this. I'm losing my ability to focus on a regular basis. I can get through about 85% of my day, which is why after a certain time, I don't handle any business. I, I refuse to let people, my phone was ringing after 4 p.m. today. My phone rang several times. After 2.30 p.m., my phone rang several times. I haven't answered it. People have been emailing me. I haven't responded back to them because I have a cutoff time now. I don't have a choice. Why? Because it has been explained to me that when all of this is said and done, I'm going to be alone. Now, wait, 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 hold on. Some of y'all, that some of y'all, I know that bothers because you've expressed it to me. Let me express something to you. I prefer to be alone. What do you mean? No, 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 no. That's not a selfish thing. I prefer to be alone because I don't want nobody feeling sorry for me. I don't want nobody babying me. That's why I left my family. I was in California, and I moved over a 1,000 miles away from my family because they were babying me. I don't want nobody babying me. I don't want nobody taking care of me. I don't care if I don't have even the strength to do for myself. I will break my neck to do for myself. Since I was 16 years old, my mother told me, you got a job, then go buy your own food and go buy your own clothes. And that's what I did, ladies and gentlemen. I've been taking care of myself since I was 16 years old. The rest of my family didn't know that. All they knew was, well, he ain't giving mama no money because I'm sitting up here having to take care of everything. She only said, room and board is all you getting, mother... And I can't blame her for that. She wasn't being mean to me when she did that. My mother told me without anybody else being around. I taught you how to sew. I taught you how to clean. I taught you how to do dishes. I taught you this. I taught you that. Because that's going to help you. You know what my mother was telling me? My mother was telling me that you're going to prefer to be alone. And you're going to end up, for the most part, alone. And so I'm teaching you how to take care of yourself. And so when I had to buy all of my own stuff and take care of myself at the age of 16, she was preparing me for now. I understood that then. I understand it now. That's why I got nothing but love for that young lady. Okay. It wasn't because she knew that I was not going to marry. My mother knew that I was very picky. She knew that I just wouldn't settle for anyone, and she knew that I would get my heart broken. <laughs> oh, God. She knew that I'd get my heart broken, and she knew that once somebody broke my heart, that was it. You see, my son's mother, she and I were engaged for 11 years. I kept forgiven her and forgiven her and forgiven her. I, and I'm going to be honest with you, there was very little she had to forgive me for because, as I said, Anything she did, I would have put up with. I would have dealt with. But she did so many things that there is no, she gets no opportunity of being anywhere around me now. See, my mother saw that. My mother never got to see my son. And I'm disappointed in that. She asked about him several times, but never got to see him. And I blame my son's mother and her mother for that. I don't hate them for it. I just, I'll say it this way because I can't say it any other way. I wish they get everything they got coming to them. Because they caused a whole lot of pain. Now mind you, I had a part that I played in all of that. But that's another story for another time. When I say when this is over, I will be alone. 
I won't be alone alone. I won't be in a house by myself uh, letting moss grow on the walls and all that. Not that type of alone. I'm going to be traveling through the United States. I'm going to do a walkabout. Technically, it's going to be a travel about, not a walkabout, because I hate walking like that no more. I don't have the ability of walking like that no more. You know, I used to be able to do five, six miles of walking a day. I could probably do about a mile, and even that would be a struggle. That would take twice as long as it used to take. Just can't do it. But I will travel throughout the United States, and I will get to see the aftermath of what's said to occur. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not going to be the greatest time, but I'm going to videotape, I'm going to film. Why? Prosperity and rec recordation. That's what the Eon.TV is all about. It wasn't supposed to start now. I was just supposed to get things ready. I'm getting ready to put out a video letting people know exactly what I need for that channel. I, I want to develop something, and I have the, the technology is there to develop the Eon channel, but I want, the Eon channel is not to be run by me. The Eon channel is supposed to be run by a corporation of individuals, not like SACOM and SICOM and all of those places, but like a real production company where we develop material and then individuals volunteer. I'll tell you guys more about that in the future. That's my vision. That's not something I was allowed to see, but that's my vision of what I've always wanted to do. And we're finally there in man's history to where I can do something like that. It's about time. Ladies and gentlemen, I have spent the last 50 years of my life I'm only 54. I spent the last 50 years of my life trying to help everybody else out. I, I do remember I had a friend, my, my first best friend. His name was Sean Hanna. Yeah, yeah, not like the Sean on uh, NCIS, the LL Cool J character. But Sean, Sean is an exceptional young person and he defended me in kindergarten and he has always remained my friend even though I know very little about Sean. Sean and I once I left fourth grade I went to a school outside the hood. Sean and I have seen each other on occasion but we haven't been friends friends. But I'll never forget that young man who befriended me and was the first friend I had outside of my family. Now, I, I mention things like this because, like I said, I don't remember my childhood. But there are certain people who have stood out. So when you hear me say things like, I'm going to end up alone, what you don't know is I'm reverting. Right after the operation, I didn't remember nothing. I faked it. Ladies and gentlemen, I faked knowing how to read. It took almost, uh, what, the operation happened in the end of 89, beginning of 90. And so it took until, yeah, I was, whew, 97. 1990, nope, not even 97. Sorry, it took until 98. Yes, I really, you know what? I just remember this now, but I was really working hard trying to improve my reading because I was still having a hard time understanding words and recognizing words. But I was faking it. Man, I go back and I look at some of the things I wrote during that period, and I'm like, God, man, that don't make no sense. Literally, I'm literally saying that as I'm reading some of the stuff I wrote during that period. Now, there are other things I wrote, like stories. Man, the stories, man, I have a lot of respect for the stories I wrote 1997, 1998, One Man's Pain, all of that stuff. 
but the legal stuff I was writing, I had to go back and look at the stuff that I wrote by hand. Some of the points were on point, the case law and everything was on point, but some of the arguments were not. Because sometimes it just didn't make any sense. And I feel sorry for some of the judges. It not, well, the stuff I'm talking about didn't have any bearing on a case or anything. It was just me writing to the court. Not a motion, just writing to the court. Motions, everything, the case law, like I said, those things were on point. Those things... I was able to do the things I needed to do. I wrote a plea agreement for myself. That thing turned out to be a work of art. To this day, everybody is upset with the plea agreement that I wrote, that they accepted, because they couldn't see the forethought. You see, when I write things, I write things with future in mind, not for the moment. They couldn't see what I was doing. So when you have the courts claiming that I'm required to go and check in with some police department, ladies and gentlemen, I never had that. I killed that at the very beginning. But because I had to pay, not because somebody else said it, but because I said it, then I allowed certain things. But as I told them, there ain't no more allowance anymore. So this is what's going on right now. This will be the seventh video today, by the way. This is what's going on right now, ladies and gentlemen. I told them to leave me alone. Because I don't have a lot of time before I lose the ability of communicating. It's not going to happen next year. It's not going to happen five weeks from now. But I will lose the ability to communicate. That's going to cause a lot of people to get upset with me. It's going to cause some people to get physical with me. It's not going to be anything that I can do about it. I'm not going to be able to defend myself or anything like that. And I'm okay because the God I serve will take care of me. Look, there's something you guys can do about it and there's nothing I can do about it. How do I know? Because I knew about this since 2001. And I'm watching these things unfold. It's 21 years, people! I have been watching these things unfold. I told my friend, his name is Kenny, I told him I'm going to end up in jail three times. One of them going to be very short. And then there's going to be another short period right after that. So the first time was 45 days. 45 days. Right after I met the young man. 45 days away from my property, away from everything. Nobody broke into my property. I, I came back. Everything was still there. My cars, everything was still there. Didn't have to worry about nothing. Okay, no problem. He, he, what did he say? You said something like this was going to happen. That's what everybody always tells me. You said something like this was going to happen. I keep telling them that's not what I, that's not me predicting anything. That's me telling you what I've been told is going to happen. So then Puerto Rico, before it even happened in Puerto Rico, I told everybody, all of my friends, I said, all I know is I'm going to be inside a facility, the walls and doors are going to be white and blue. Walls white, doors blue. The facility I ended up in Puerto Rico, walls were white, doors were blue, and they had a trap in it. So I said, I assume lockdown. I ended up in Puerto Rico, and the pod I was in used to be a lockdown pod, but they converted it. And then six months after I'm there, in that facility, a lieutenant gets gunned down on the street after he leaves the prison, and they lock the place down. You think you guys are going through a lockdown? Ladies and gentlemen, I've already been through it for almost a little bit over a year. That facility stayed in lockdown, and it wasn't fun because for the first three weeks, there was no taking showers. You had to do it inside the cell, but that's what I saw, and then I ended up going through it. Hold on now. Then right after that incident, we had the incident that happened 
here in California. It's a very short stint, 22 months. And each time they're releasing me. No tail. Everybody else who gets released from a jail is on probation. They're releasing me from jail and there's no tail. I've never been on probation. I'm sorry. You guys don't understand. There's only one time they had a reason for arresting me. Only one time. And I literally said, here I am. Take me. And I wrote the plea, which took away any probation. Was not doing any probation. I made sure when I wrote it that that was the case. And every other time after that, as a matter of fact, this last time, oh, you need to go talk to the probation department. I ain't going to talk to nobody. Uh, sir, I'm from the probation department. I need to go over some things. Woman, I don't know who the f you are, but you need to get out of my face. I ain't on nobody's probation, and I ain't doing nobody's probation. Oh, no, well, you're going to have to do that. I said, yeah, we'll see. I said, make me. And she came back a couple of hours later. Well, sir, I apologize. I said, oh, no, you ain't got to apologize to me. You came in here acting like you were my ruler, acting like you get to dictate to me. You need to get out of my face. I ain't got nothing to say to you. That was the last time I spoke to that woman. I ain't got time. I have one guy, because I talk to the people in the prison, and he tells me he thinks I'm hiding because of where I am. I told him, I said, hiding? I said, this property and everything is well known. I said, they know exactly where I am. I ain't nobody hiding from anybody. I said, but what you don't understand, and this is what I can tell you, the area I'm in, ladies and gentlemen, this is the area that I was in in 2013. That's why I came here. I'm going to tell you something else that I haven't told people publicly. I've only told my close friends. The young lady who I'm to marry lives in this county. She already knows about me. I don't know her name, but I know how she looks. I know she's an only child. I know she stays with her mother. I know the color of her skin. I know the type of hair she has. Do you understand? The God that I serve is making sure that the person who is right for me, I'm right where I'm to meet her. It's hard to explain to all of you because you won't get it. But I've known for years, especially ever since I stopped speaking to my son's mother, that I would meet the woman who was just right for me because that's what I asked him for. So when the individual told me that I was hiding, please, I'm in this county, as, as prejudiced as this county is, I'm in this county because of her. And I'm looking forward to it. I've had a couple of women come my way and make all kinds of suggestions towards me as far as relationships, and I had to let them know. You guys don't get it, do you? My wife and I, you talk about quote-unquote soulmates. That, sorry, I have to say it because it's the truth. That woman gets me. She understands me. She'll never argue with me. We will never debate. And the problem is, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, she'll be in control. I will never, ever dominate over her or even attempt to dominate over her because guess what? She'll never give me any reason to think that I need to. I just cannot explain it to you, but I've known about her since 2013, and what I've also known is that she's known about me. So when I meet this young lady, technically I've already met her in more ways than one. She will already know me. We will already get along. We will already know each other. We'll already know what irritates the other. We'll already not do that. 
to the other. Her mother, her mother and I are not going to get along at first. Woo! Matter of fact, our very first conversation is not going to be a great one. <laughs> and I, I'm going to keep this video because I'm definitely going to want to play this for her. But our very first conversation is going to be, well, technically, originally, when I met her. Because, like I said, I've already met her. It's hard to explain. But when I said I was, I was there in the future, I am not joking about that. And I got a chance to do a redo because we had our first encounter of me and her mother. And <laughs> she did something that really pissed me off. And so I came at her kind of crooked. And then there was another opportunity for me to recognize what she was going through because she was having a difficult time. And after that, we were peas in a pod, got along just perfect. So I'm looking forward to that. Again, I know many of you will not understand this, but some of you will be around after, and you will have opportunity of asking, and I will definitely fill you in on how everything panned out. I just can't talk about it all in detail now. And this is over an hour. So if you've stayed on for this long, then that means this was meant for you to hear. That's all I can tell you. What, what I can say for certainty, if you stayed around this long, don't question everything. But sit there and think about what's being said and ask yourself, is this believable? Is there, is there a possibility that there might be another side to this story that I am unaware of? Start asking those questions. Wait a minute, could it be that they're doing this? Here's the last thing I'm going to say because I, I really need to go lay down and go to sleep. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of those necessary things. You already know about the FEMA colors. If you've forgotten about that, shame on you and everyone else. When that time comes, you must be a sheeple. You want to be yellow. You want to capitulate. If they tell you to do something, do it. If they tell you to move this way, you move that way. If they tell you to show this ID, that ID, you do it. All of you who are bucking the system and challenging the system, you need to understand those are the reds and blues, bloods and crips. They get killed or they get locked away. If it wasn't for the God I was serving, I promise you I would not survive this because I am not the type of person they allow to survive. I know for a fact that I am a systemic anomaly. That every time they try to create a new so-called system, somebody like me or a group of people like me interfere, mess things up. I know that for a fact. Ladies and gentlemen, ever since I saw The Matrix and the, the architect talked about the systemic anomaly, I realized then that that's the category I fit in. I call us the 14 percenters. We're the group that won't just accept something because just somebody says it. 14 percenters. 14 percent of the world's population cannot be made to capitulate. And yet, I'm going to have to do the best I can because I really, really, really am going to have a hard time with that. You are not part of the 14 percenter. See, 14 percenters wouldn't have stayed this long <laughs> listening to this video because it's not that they think they know everything, but they think that they already understand how to handle things, how to get by things and through things. Ladies and gentlemen, you just do what you're told to do, not permanently. You'll know when that time comes. You'll know when. It's that important for you just to do it. 
that you will save yourself a whole lot of sorrow if you just did it for that one moment. And it may be for three or four weeks. Okay? But you will have to do it. And once you do it, hey, it's going to be difficult for a couple of weeks. But after that, you're going to see everything will go smooth for you. You just need to trust me on that. Some of you are not going to listen. You're going to butt heads with them. I've already seen the guns. I've already seen the police vehicles that literally have the weaponry on it and the so-called little small little small little missiles, small little rockets, you know, like the um, grenade launching type rockets that are blowing up cars on the freeway. I've already seen that. I've already seen the cars driving down the street plowing over people because they literally are not going to stop for nobody. That's I've seen this. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to get that violent out there that you are not going to be able to pull over for just about anybody because they'll kill you. People are going to be killing like that in the near future. You can see it, though. Come on now. Some of you have lived in those type of neighborhoods where you say the wrong thing, you're out at the wrong time, somebody's shooting you, somebody's killing you for nothing. Well, that's where we're headed. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be so hard to get food that people are going to do the cannibalism thing. You don't believe me, huh? Well, think about the underground cities. The underground cities. You forgot about that, right? Well, they're going to leave the group up here, the ones who are surviving, they're going to leave them to fend for themselves and to deal with the military and the police. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all need to really pay attention to what's going on. If they have the underground cities, then what's the purpose? It's not a nuclear war that they're getting ready to do. It's not a nuclear fallout that they're getting ready to do. They, they're not doing that. But they're getting ready to release something that will cause a lot of death. Now, it's 11, 18 in the evening. This video, I did this video with the internet cut off so I wouldn't have any interference. And if you've seen, there's been no interference. My computer hasn't given me any glitches. And I'll be doing that on a regular basis because I'm tired of the stupidity. See, if I was connected to the internet, this thing would be causing me all kind of problems. Wouldn't be able to go there, wouldn't be able to go there, wouldn't be able to go here. I will keep you guys informed as to what I'm doing. There are a couple of things that I'm doing. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. There was one other thing. I got to keep y'all, those who are here, a little bit longer. I knew I forgot to bring it up, and so now I have to bring it up. In 2012, we had the Defrauded Homeowners of America. I told them that I was bringing forth the class action, and they invested in that class action lawsuit. I did a QTAM, which says, and that's the private attorney general type lawsuit. I notified the attorney general, had the documents served upon the attorney general, saying, hey, look here, Mr. Attorney General, this is what I'm getting ready to do. The attorney general says, no, nah, we ain't going to take this case. So I went into court, and I filed the lawsuit into the court saying, hey, the attorney general says, hey, they ain't taking this case. Well, well, you got to take it, and I'm going to be the relator. And the attorney general came into the case, and they filed and said that the case was frivolous, that it, I didn't, um, what's the word that they use? I failed to state a claim whereby relief can be granted. And I sit up here going, excuse me, Mr. Court, every last one of these points, I've already shown you all the law backing it up. And they're saying that I ain't got no case. Okay, and the court dismissed it. I tried to appeal it, and the Ninth Circuit Court ignored me. And then that's when they came and they put me in a facility for four years. Ladies and gentlemen, during that period, the Attorney General, because we were doing a class action suit, involving the entire United States regarding the defrauded homeowners of America, not the defrauded homeowners of California. The attorney generals of the entire United States came together as a group to prevent people like me from doing exactly what I was doing regarding the banks. And two years later, they got the banks to settle with them for $23 billion. But wait a minute. 
they defrauded the American people, and the government gave them $978 billion, and all they had to do was pay $23 billion to the government, and they didn't have to pay it all at once? That's a steal, ain't it? Well, that settlement under the 1866 Civil Rights Act, where QTAM comes from, I'm entitled to 35% of what they settled for. You see, I filed the lawsuit in the courtroom under seal, like the law says, and they brought the very same lawsuit and added a couple of other things to it. Can't do that. That's like plagiarism, ladies and gentlemen. You can't take what I did and then go make money off of it. Uh-uh. I contacted them a couple of times between 2014 and now, and they've ignored me. Well, they won't be ignoring me anymore. I'm going after my 35%, because and plus interest. I ain't playing. Ladies and gentlemen, I just had to wait for the time because I've already known that I would be able to do exactly that. TTOPP, if you don't know who TTOPP is, the website is TTOPP.org. The company hasn't even fully started yet. But what that's getting ready to do, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't just create that out of thin air. That was the organization that I saw in the future. That's why I could come up with the name in 2013, create the website in 2018. Okay, that website's been up since 2018. All the information, there have been no updates or anything. Everything's been there since 2018. No updates, no nothing. That's exactly what we're getting ready to do. One way or another, they're going to give me my percentage. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this part of Al Green, he won't be playing. I, I, I know you guys can probably barely hear it because he's in my background, but what's going to happen is we're going to let you guys get to your day. If you stayed around up until now, then I have respect for you. Do not email me, text me, or anything else letting me know that you stayed around to this point. You can do it in the future. When that time comes, but you can't do it now, because I don't care. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to understand that I do care about people, but I don't care. People are going to die. And the fact that I'm not going to be able to communicate, I'm still going to be there. I'm going to be able to understand everything that's going on, just won't be able to communicate. That's the aphasia part of everything. I've already known about the aphasia and about the... Retrograde amnesia? I've known about that. I've known exactly how this was going to end. So that's for my benefit. That's not to hurt me. I'm not going to be hurt by the aphasia. The aphasia is going to get real bad. But I'm still going to be fully capable of understanding and thinking. Just won't be able to communicate. I'm going to be trying to say something and everything is going to be coming out the wrong way. So I'm going to literally, I'm, I've already created a card <laughs> letting people know, hey, I got this, and you definitely going to have to be patient. I've already created the card, and I'll have little flashcards that I'll be able to show people because we won't be able to have a conversation. I'm okay with that. I wasn't at first because that it kind of scared me, but because I've been through aphasia before, at, right after the operation, and I'm going in reverse, so I already know what to expect, so I'm okay. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for allowing me to do two videos to where I got to talk. Because I've been wanting to do something like this for a while. Redress? Yeah, this was the channel to do it on. And guess what I'm about to do? Need to make sure y'all understand. I'll be going over this video and the previous one for the next couple of days. Because, like I said, even when everything is said and done, I'll be going over stuff like this and listening to stuff. Hey, as my boy Al Green said, we started this video out by me talking about how I realized that I included myself in the group, that I wasn't selfish. 
and that means more to me than anything you could possibly know. You, you, you can't serve the God of love and be selfish. And so I am grateful that I serve the God of love and I ain't selfish. Okay, like I said, that was the last I'll greet. Hey, everybody, one hour and 15 minutes, I got to go. Y'all take care. Uh-oh, get out of the way so I can shut this video down. See, it don't even want me to shut it down. See, I hate that part right there. All right, goodbye, y'all.